Hey, a friend, Chris here from MyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 12 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're gonna help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to becoming an expert, fully comfortable and capable and fluent to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Today, I wanna give you a brief walkthrough of the snap and drag features here in Logic Pro, which you can find right above the tracks area as both snap and drag provide some very useful functions as you're moving regions and events around your projects. With the snap menu, we can tell Logic that as we move regions around our project, we want our regions to lock or snap to particular values in relation to the musical timing of our projects. Whereas with the drag menu, we can tell Logic how we want our regions to interact with each other, again, based on how we move and interact with those regions. First, let's just take a quick look at the project in front of us and how the tracks area is set up for our project. At the top of the tracks area, we have what looks like a ruler. And you can see that there's clearly a form of measurement going across the top of the project. We can see numbers as well. And if we start to zoom in using our key command, command right arrow, we can see that as we zoom in, the resolution of the ruler at the top becomes more specific. Now, instead of seeing bar one, bar three, bar five, we're seeing bar one, two, three, and four. If we continue to zoom in, now we're starting to see individual beats within a bar. Going further, we see even tinier measurements. And if we look at the LCD in the control bar, we can see that this project is set at a tempo of 145 beats per minute and is operating at a time signature of 4-4. The point of all this is that generally speaking, most music is operating at a particular tempo at a particular time signature. And you can measure out the tempo and the time signature in bars and beats. And for most of us who are recording and producing and making music, more than likely you want your musical ideas and recordings to line up together in musically meaningful ways. And that's where the snap function comes in. If we go up to the snap menu at the top and click on it, we can see that a couple options are already enabled within this menu. First, the snap to grid option is enabled. Second, the smart snapping feature is enabled. And third, the snap regions to relative value is also enabled. All right, so let's hone in on the bass and drums in this project. I'm gonna mute all the guitars for now, just so we can listen to how the bass lines up with the drums. Here we go. So there's a couple different ways that we can play with the timing of our bass while ensuring that the bass is still in time with the project as a whole. So let's go up to the snap menu. And first let's set the snap feature to bars. From here, let's try moving one of our bass regions. I'm gonna drag this to the left and then to the right. And as you can see, this region is moving bar by bar and I can't get any finer in resolution. I can't get the bass to be even tighter with the drums, right? And now the bass is a whole bar ahead. So if we take a listen, All right, so our bass is now a bar ahead in time, but still remains in time with the project as a whole, thanks to the snapping feature. But what's up with the fact that the bass region is not actually lining up with any of the bars? Well, if we go to the snap menu, that's because of this option for snapping regions to the relative value. And by relative value, we mean not lining up the region with bar two or bar three, but instead moving the region by a bar in either direction. This makes it really easy to move your regions by musical values without having the boundaries line up to exact values. If we switch this to snap regions to absolute value and now move the base region, ah, uh, look at that. Now the region is snapping to the major bars. If we take a listen. Obviously not ideal in this situation, but snapping to exact bar values can be really helpful. Let's undo. Now let's go up to the snap features and let's switch this from bar to beat. And let's now again, try to move the bass. And now we're moving the bass beat by beat within a bar. So we can offset this to any beat that we want. All right, let's keep going down the line of our snap menu. And let's give divisions a try. And let's move this region. 
at which point the region is locking to even finer resolution. Going further, we can set this to ticks. So now we're making even finer adjustments with the snap value. And we can go as small as samples, which is a very tiny resolution. If we zoom in here, start to really, really fine tune the placement of this region. And there are also quarter frame and frame options for those of us who work with Sempty time code. By the way, if the ruler that's set to bars and beats is not working for your project, maybe you're scoring to film and you really need a time-based ruler. If you go up to the view menu above the track headers, in this third section of the dropdown, we have an option for a secondary ruler. If we enable this, look at that. We've now added a time-based ruler to the top of the tracks area. Right, so the options within the snap menu allow us to lock any movements we make of a region or event to a particular value, whether it be musically meaningful or time-based. And we can choose to have logic take into consideration any offset that any particular region has from a major bar or beat, or we can have logic absolutely lock our movements to particular bars, beats, and divisions. Lastly, we have the smart snap option, which is pretty much all of these different snap options combined. If we select the smart option, and let's try moving this region right now, at this current view of our tracks area, you can see that there is some locking going on as I move this region, right? It's clearly locking to beats and divisions. If we start to zoom out and we start to move this region again, now we're locking to the individual beats. And if we keep going, let's try this region right here. And as you can see, we're moving the region by every bar and half bar. Whereas if we zoom in on our region and make some adjustments, we're now moving at a much finer resolution. And the point being is that the smart snapping is based, number one, on the time signature of your project and how zoomed in or out you are from the tracks area. After that, we could choose to disable snapping entirely by going to the snap menu and then disabling snap to grid. So no movements are being dictated by the grid. So we can just be as granular as we need to be. And you can enable or disable snapping by going to the menu and clicking on snap to grid. We're using key command, command G. So we're turning this on and off, right? So if we set this to bar, move it to the major bar, I turn it off using command G, look at that. As well as if you have snapping on and want to temporarily disable the snapping function, just click and hold with your mouse. And then after, click and hold on shift and control. And this will temporarily disable snapping. But you may find that it may take a lot of movement because we're working in a very fine resolution at this point. All right, from here, let's dig into the drag options, which there are only five to choose from. And again, drag allows you to tell logic how you want regions to interact with one another based on your interactions with those regions. First, we have overlap. And let's just navigate down to this guitar right here. Let's solo it. And we're gonna take a listen to this first section into the second section, just so we can get a sense for where this guitar is at. And then we're gonna make some edits. Okay, so we can hear these are two distinct moments of this guitar part. Now, if we split up the second part using our marquee tool, thanks to click zones, I'm gonna make a selection, use my pointer tool to separate this section. If I now take this section and drag it on top of the first portion and let go, all right, we can see that the region is cutting off the first part, right at about that second chord. Let's take a listen. Okay, so we can hear that second chord of the first moment has been cut off because I dragged the second region on top of the first. All right, totally makes sense. But if we click on the first region, we can see that the length of the first region has been preserved. No part of it has been cut off visually. So we can see that first region exactly how we had it. And then we can look at the second region right on top and we still get that cut off playback. Now check it out. Let's move back this region. Let's now split up the first part and drag it on top of this section right here. So we should be cutting off 
the second region. Take a listen. Did you catch that? Sounds like that we're still cutting off the first region with the second region, even though we dragged the first region on top of the second region. Here we go again. That's pretty interesting. And you may find as you work on your projects with drag set to overlap that things can get very contextual. So let's undo all these steps and let's start with the first section and drag it on top. And let's take a listen now. Ah, uh, there we go. We have the second region, full length has been preserved, but we're hearing that first region as we expect it to be edited based on where we placed it. If we select an empty section in the tracks area, we deselect the second region, which brings the first one back to the forefront. All right, moving on, let's go to set drag to no overlap. At this point, if we make a selection with our marquee tool, split this up, drag it on top, Check it out. Looks about how we saw with overlap. Let's take a listen. What if we select the first region? Oh, interesting. We don't see any extra length of the original region. And that's because with no overlap, when you move a region on top of another, you remove that portion of the overlapped region. All right, so it works in the other direction too. Make this selection, drag it on top. Take a listen. Personally, I prefer no overlap because I wanna be sure that what I'm hearing is what I'm seeing. Then we have the option for crossfade. So if we make this selection, drag it on top. Okay, if we click on the first region, we can see that the two regions have been preserved just like with overlap. And if we listen back, Check it out, there's a smooth transition from the first region into the second region thanks to the crossfade that has been added to these two overlapping regions. And you still get to preserve the boundaries of each region if that's something that's meaningful to you. Next, I'm going to split up this region, get rid of this guy, and let's go up to drag and set this to shuffle left. Now check it out. I'm gonna try moving this region away from the other. Cool, all right, that's exactly how it expected to be. If we drag the region closer, oh man, look at that. The second region snapped to the boundary of the region that came before it. That's pretty interesting. Move this back, yeah, moves back. Closer, let's try splitting up this region right here. I made a marquee selection. I'm gonna press delete on my Mac's keyboard. I know everything after that selection that I deleted has been shuffled to the left. Check this out. If we drag that region back, and if we adjust the length of this region, our third region has shuffled to the left an equal amount. If we split up this region and drag it back in time, uh-oh, looks like we've now flipped the placement of that region with the region that came before it. Let's do the same right now with this region. Oh, interesting. Everything shuffling around back to back. Shuffle can be great in the context of like working on a podcast or working on something with a lot of dialogue where you have a lot of ums and ahs and clunky language that you really just don't need because as you edit and get rid of that clunky language, everything will shuffle in a direction to help you out. And this functionality works in the same direction if you're working with shuffle right. So in this case, if we move, let's get rid of this region here. We can see that this region is shuffled to the right because I deleted that second one. And if we try moving this to the right, it snaps to the boundary of the next region. And if we make this selection, look at that. How interesting. There you have it, the snap and drag functions that can provide a ton of help in the context of how you're interacting with and moving around your different regions and events. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you for more tomorrow in this newbie to ninja series here on Wide Logic Pro Rules. Take care.